What up YouTube? This is Steven and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to do a lyrical analysis of Utara Hikaru's song, Bulk Yaku. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly or not, so if I'm not, please forgive me. Alright, let's jump into this lyrical analysis now. Here we go. Um, and by the way, they didn't separate Utana's part from Cole's part. Um, by the way, this song features a rapper by the name of uh, K-O-H-H. I think that's Cole. So they didn't separate those two parts, unfortunately. Um, so I don't know for sure who's singing what because I don't speak Japanese. So I can't, you know, mix, mix and match and find out. So disclaimer, there you go. All right, here we go with these lyrics. The one I love isn't here anymore, in heaven or hell. They're in places no one can see. All right, so right off the bat, this song deals with death. And I think this is the rapper Cole's part, um, by the way. Because he starts out, start the song with this rap. So yeah, it looks like we're dealing with death in this um, song. Next lyrics, memories of when I was three, good memories of 23 years ago. I can't remember them, but I can't forget. All right, so he's reminiscing at some at this point. You know, even the dirty things appear beautiful. A nostalgic voice leaving me to go to someone else. I'll toss the memories into the rubbish bin. Pour gasoline on them and burn them. So it seems like for some reason this guy does doesn't want to keep those memories. But why? Why wouldn't he want to keep those memories unless they're painful to him? Which I could kind of understand. You know, sometimes those like memories of a loved one who's no longer with you can be painful because you know that you can no longer have those good times with that person anymore. So it kind of reminds you of what you don't have anymore. So perhaps it's coming from that point of a view. Let's see, pour gasoline on them and burn them. Then change into my morning dress until someone comes to greet me. So He's going to burn these memories and then, I guess, have a funeral, more or less, for the memories. Or, you know, change into his mourning dress, as in, you know, he's mourning the loss of someone, the death of someone or something. Let's see, I'm alive just to die. That's why we're born. That alone. So... It sounds like he might have reached a certain point where he's feeling like, what's the point? You know, like, why am I here? Why are we all here if we're just here to die? If, like, if that's kind of like the ultimate destination is death, why are we here, you know? And that's a good question. So it's kind of like maybe a roundabout way of asking what is the meaning of life. Let's see. That's why we're born. That alone. If I could go to the grave, I'd I'd be happy. I'd be happy. So wow, it seems like if he could die, he could be happy. He would be happy. Then again, maybe he's visiting the grave, but it seems like he's trying to go to death maybe like maybe he's reached the end of his rope and unfortunately a lot of people do reach the end of their rope and take their life unfortunately you know i think that was the case with utada hikaru's mom unfortunately and it's you know, it's a tough thing when a person feels that way. Also, I think when people feel that way, they might not 
have someone they feel like they can turn to for help if they're feeling that way. But I think the best advice for anyone that I could give, you know, for people who do reach the end of their rope is to tie the rope into a knot and hold on for life. Because it's always something better than the situation you're in now. Yes. So you kind of have to hold out and wait out for it. But unfortunately, some people reach the end of their rope before that happens. Um, next lyrics. Sleeping in the coffin, covered in tattoos, with these cold hands. Everyone's crying. And that's the worst. So it seems like he's painting the picture of a funeral, perhaps, because maybe he's having an outer body experience and looking at people who are at his funeral. <clears throat> so everyone's crying, and that's the worst. That's the worst. That's the worst. We should just forget it all. Clinging to the past is so uncool. I don't need it anymore. So it seems like he doesn't want to hold on to the memories anymore. And I think this also could possibly be reflective of how Utari Karu feels in a sort of a way. And on one hand, I can understand that. But on the other hand, it's like, if you don't hold on to the person's memory, who else will? And this person's life, if it's totally forgotten, will be somewhat meaningless. So if you want your loved one to life, if you want your loved one's life to have meaning, then I suggest you do hold on to that, you know, those memories. All right. Next lyrics, and I think this is when Utahi Cardu starts to sing. Um, so here we go. Hot lips, cold hands. Let me forget the words. Hard liquor and scary dreams. Let me dance with my eyes shut. So her lips are hot for some reason. I'm not sure why. Her hands are cold, possibly because she doesn't have good blood circulation. Um, are possibly representative of death. I'm not sure. Let me forget the words. Hard liquor and scary dreams. So it seems like Tiny Cardi might have resorted to substance abuse to deal with the pain of losing a loved one, you know, possibly her mother. That's definitely not the best way to deal with death and to deal with the loss of a loved one. Um, substance abuse will ultimately just leave you, after the effects were off, leave you feeling empty, but also possibly even having an you know, creating an addiction, you know, because you're going to keep going for that feeling, but once the feeling is has faded, then you're going to feel empty. You know, it's just going to ultimately leave you, you know, with nothing and are just longing for the feeling of the drug again. Let me dance with my eyes shut. All right, so as the Utada Tots know, you know, the Utada Armada knows, Utada is not a good dancer. Um, she's not a good dancer. But I guess this is what the liquor has done to her. She's dancing with her eyes shut now. So maybe she's like a party girl now. You know, she's partying it up, you know. And also drinking it up, too. So that could be a part of it. Sometimes people do that when death happens. Some people throw themselves into their work when that happens as well. Some people just, you know, withdraw from society and from, you know, the life that they're living. You know, different effects for different people. The path leading to a bright place may not necessarily be bright. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And I think I sort of alluded to this at one point or another when I was talking about, you know, if you reach the end of your rope, tie it in a knot and hold on for life. Because I think, like, that road to that beautiful, bright place is probably really dark, you know, very grim and gloomy, 
and possibly even frightening you know, and will test you but once you reach the other side then you'll find that bright place but the road to the bright place is definitely a struggle where's the exit there's nothing but entrances I run through a deep forest so she wants to exit from this path but unfortunately it's set up where you can't leave you have to go and follow it all the way you know to the end you know you can't opt out of it you have to go through it and some people I think when um, people take their lives as their way of opting out of it so I guess ultimately you can but you shouldn't you know and I think that's when people reach the end of their rope when they feel like they're on this journey and they can't make it to the bright place so they want to opt out of the journey um, but don't opt out continue to struggle through your journey to can continue to push forward yeah and it's easier said than done of course you know but it's the best advice I have and the best advice I can give at the moment yeah. all right next lyrics and this I believe is uh, the rap again uh, by Cole even if feet are torn off even if an artificial leg or sorry even if feet are torn off even with an artificial leg for all time run Milos or Melos alright so I'm guessing run as in can either run away or run towards the good place maybe you know the bright place I see closing my mouth but I open my eyes and see hard liquor and vomit I'll never go back all right so it sounds like once that effect has worn off now you're seeing like the aftermath of the substance abuse you know and let's see they never want to go back so I'm guessing never want to go back to the place of substance abuse or either never want to go back to life without the substance I hope it's life um, beyond this substance you know if I could, once more, I like to spit out the saliva I drank. Men, too, can double deal. Uh, I'm not quite sure what double deal means. Um, I love you. That's why I hate you. <laughs> if I could see you, I'd like, I'd like to happy, but in pain. All right, so I'm thinking we have a bit of an English moment here. Um, but let me see if I can interpret that. I guess ultimately, he is having, he's suffering from the effects of, you know, substance abuse in this, in this case, uh, alcohol abuse. And I think he may be re referencing the addiction like I hate this you know I hate this liquor but I love it at the same time you know because it gives him a certain feeling that makes him feel fulfilled but afterwards the aftermath of it it kind of like you know messes up his life if you know you can't handle your liquor and you um, you know don't keep your life together you know, some people can be functioning alcoholics. Other people cannot. Their lives fall apart. You know. 
So it depends. It seems like he may be in a situation where he can't really function while being an alcoholic. So his life is like falling apart and he hates that aspect of it. But he loves the feeling that he gets when he drinks it. Yeah. So this song, I guess, could be possibly about like, you know, death, but also how you cope with death, too. Let's see. Next lyrics. We're so greedy. Asking for too much again. Oh, the, oh yeah, this is Utada Yukari's part, by the way. I think so. We're so greedy. Asking for too much again. Empty request. So, Utada, she was born with a silver spoon in her mouth. So, for Utada, it's like, you know, money ain't a thing. Money ain't an object. It's just whatever, you know. So, a lot of times, she seems to approach situations where and not really think about finances and things like that. I know when it comes to her relationships, I think it's sort of similar to that. <clears throat> Hot lips, cold hands, let me forget the words. Tight jeans, gentle eyes. Call me by that nostalgic name. So she wants someone to call her by that nostalgic name. Some loved one, I guess. Because they have, a, I guess, maybe Utana has a... Someone calls Utada a nickname that she may like or that she may hold dear to her at this point. Let's see. In this vast world, there's an, an unknown stage. I hate my bag. It just gets in the way. So, in this vast world, there's an unknown stage, possibly death. You know, because we don't, or the afterlife, rather. Let's say the afterlife, because death, it seems like it's done. But the afterlife is like, okay, you die, but then you move on to the next phase of life. So it's not like you're really dead. You just kind of like transition, you know. And she hates her bag. It just gets in the way. So her bag may refer to her baggage. Like sometimes we have baggage from, you know, relationships we've been in may you know whether they are romantic relationships or familiar familial relationships or friendships business relationships all types of relationships hard liquor and scary dreams when I someday die empty-handed would be best so hmm She wants to die without anything in her hand. That's symbolic of something, but I can't interpret it. I don't know what that means. I'm not sure. I think maybe she's alluding to she maybe would die without having on one hand, like having, you know, <clears throat> Anything she's clinging on to, like, say, money, you know. But I'm not sure. So that's the lyrical analysis for this song. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, as far as the music video for this song is concerned, I actually have a separate video. that, I, um, And in that video, I speak specifically about the music video and the symbolism. So that's pretty much it for this video. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to comment and tell me what you guys think. Feel free to let me know. Feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Thanks a lot for watching. Adios and goodbye for now.